The Milgram Experiment In the year 1961, a groundbreaking study was conducted that would challenge the very foundations of human behaviour. Deep in the heart of a prestigious university, a young psychologist named Stanley Milgram thought to explore the dark depths of obedience and the power of authority. With a glimmer of curiosity in his eyes, Milgram meticulously designed an experiment that would forever change the way we perceive ourselves and our capacity to follow orders. Little did he know the extent to which his study would test the boundaries of human morality, however. Within the walls of a sterile laboratory, participants were invited to take part in what they believed was a simple memory and learning experiment. The unsuspecting participants, known as the teachers, were introduced to an authoritative figure, the stern-looking experimenter. The experiment began innocently enough. The teacher and an accomplice, a confederate, were placed in separate rooms. The teacher's task was to ask the confederate a series of questions and administer an electric shock whenever an incorrect answer was given. Unbeknownst to the teacher, the shocks were simulated and the confederate merely pretended to experience pain. As the questions progressed, the shocks became increasingly intense, with each wrong answer. The confederate, skillfully playing the role of a victim, would scream, beg for mercy and even cry out in pain. Yet the experimenter, an emblem of authority, insisted that the teacher must continue with the shocks, assuring them that it was necessary for the success of their experiment. Caught between their innate sense of empathy and the weight of obedience, the participants found themselves in a moral dilemma. Some hesitated, their hands trembling as they pressed the shock buttons, while others protested, their hearts yearning to protect the confederate from harm. But the study had a chilling revelation to unveil. Against all expectations, a surprising number of participants succumbed to the pressure of authority. Despite their internal turmoil, they continued to administer the shocks, escalating the voltage with each mistake. The experiment seemed to expose a hidden truth, a dark propensity within us to blindly obey those in positions of power, even when it conflicts with our own conscience. As Milgram observed the haunting results of his experiment, he was left with a profound sense of awe and concern. He had peeled back the layers of human behavior, revealing the fragility of our moral compasses in the face of authority. The implications were staggering, raising questions about the nature of obedience, the responsibility of those in power, and the role of individual autonomy in a complex society. Decades have passed since the Milgram experiment sent shockwaves through the scientific community and society at large. Its controversial nature has sparked countless debates, challenging our understanding of human behavior, ethics, and the power dynamics that shape our lives. As we delve into the story of the Milgram experiment, we are confronted with uncomfortable truths about ourselves, a reminder that the line between right and wrong can blur under the weight of authority. It urges us to reflect on the importance of critical thinking, empathy, and moral courage in the face of obedience. May this tale serve as a reminder that we must never relinquish our autonomy and blindly follow orders. Let us remain vigilant, questioning the authority that seeks to dictate our actions. And above all, let empathy and compassion guide us on the path towards a more just and ethical world. Willowbrook Hepatitis Study In the mid-20th century, there existed a place called Willowbrook State School. It was a large institution nestled in the outskirts of New York where children with intellectual disabilities found themselves at the mercy of an overcrowded and understaffed facility. Amidst the challenges of limited resources, sanitation and hygiene, a group of researchers, led by Dr. Saul Krugman, sought to shed light on the mysteries of a formidable disease, hepatitis. The highly contagious virus had plagued the school, causing outbreaks and suffering among its vulnerable inhabitants. Driven by a desire to unravel the secrets of hepatitis, Dr. Krugman and his team devised a study that would ultimately become a subject of great controversy and ethical scrutiny. They planned to deliberately infect healthy children within Willowbrook with the hepatitis virus, hoping to gain insights into its transmission and natural cause. The children, unaware of the true nature of this study, were unwitting participants. In the name of scientific discovery, 
they were subjected to oral administrations of a preparation derived from the infected feces of individuals or even injections containing the virus. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the children experienced the harrowing consequences of this study. Their innocence was tarnished by a deliberate infection and they became living test subjects in an experiment they had never consented to. Outside the confines of Willowbrook, the world remained oblivious to the questionable practices taking place within its walls. But as time went on, whispers of the study began to reach the ears of concerned individuals. The very notion of exploiting vulnerable children for the sake of scientific advancement sent shockwaves through the society. Eventually, the truth came to light, and the Willowbrook hepatitis study became a symbol of ethical misconduct. People questioned the morality of using institutionalized children without their informed consent. The conditions of the school, plagued by unsanitary environments and neglect, only deepened the sense of outrage. The outrage led to change. The Willowbrook hepatitis study played a pivotal role in shaping regulations and ethical guidelines for protection of human subjects in research. The voices of those who had suffered within its walls would not be forgotten. Project MK Ultra. Project MK Ultra, also known as the CIA's mind control program, is indeed a notorious and highly controversial project that was conducted by the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA of the United States. The project aimed to explore various methods of mind control and manipulation for both offense and defensive purposes. It's important to note that the information available about MKUltra is based on declassified documents and testimonies, although some details remain classified or unknown. MKUltra officially began in the early 1950s and continued until the mid-1960s, although some believe that similar research may have continued beyond that time frame under different names or projects. The program consisted of multiple sub-projects conducted at various institutions, universities and research facilities both in the United States and abroad. The research conducted under MKUltra involved a wide range of unethical experiments on human subjects, often without their knowledge or informed consent. These experiments included the administration of various drugs, such as LSD, mescaline, and other hallucinogens, as well as substances like barbiturates and amphetamines. The goal was to understand the effects of these substances on human behavior and to determine whether they could be used for interrogation, mind control, or psychological warfare. In addition to drug experiments, MKUltra also explored other techniques, including hypnosis, sensory deprivation, electroconvulsive therapy, and psychological torture. Some experiments involved the use of sexual abuse and manipulation, primarily aimed at studying the effects of trauma on the human mind. The exact extent of the project's success and its specific achievements remain unclear, due to the deliberate destruction of most of the MK Ultra files in 1973, on the orders of the then CIA director, Richard Helms. However, some evidence suggests that the program did not achieve its stated goals of developing reliable mind control techniques. MKUltra came to public attention through investigations by the US Congress in the 1970s, led by the Church Committee and the Rockefeller Commission. These investigations revealed the unethical nature of the experiments and the violation of human rights. As a result, MKUltra became a symbol of government overreach and the abuse of power. The revelations surrounding MKUltra led to significant reforms in research ethics and the establishment of guidelines to protect human subjects in future experiments. However, it is important to note that similar concerns and controversies regarding government-sponsored experimentation and unethical practices continue to be debated today. The Aversion Project The Aversion Project was a highly controversial and unethical medical experiment conducted in South Africa during the apartheid era. The project aimed to cure homosexuality and other forms of perceived deviant sexual behaviour through various aversion therapy techniques. The experiments were carried out by the South African military's Medical Research Council, the MRC, in the 1970s and 80s. 
Homosexuality was considered a criminal offence in South Africa at the time, and the government sought to eradicate it through these unethical practices. Under the Aversion Project, homosexual individuals, as well as others deemed undesirable based on their sexual orientation or gender identity, were subjected to cruel and inhumane treatments. These treatments included electric shock therapy, drug-induced nausea, and hormone injections to induce chemical castration. Some participants were even forced to undergo sex change operations against their will. The project not only violated the basic rights and dignity of the individuals involved, but also ignored the established principles of medical ethics, including informed consent and the prohibition of torture or cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment. The aversion project remained undisclosed until the late 1990s, when a journalist exposed its existence. The revelations led to public outrage and legal action. In 1999, a class action lawsuit was filed against the South African government on behalf of the victims. And in 2003, a settlement was reached, providing compensation to those affected by the experiments. It serves as a painful chapter in the history of human rights abuses, and has led to increased awareness and efforts to protect the rights and dignity of all individuals, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. The Guatemalan STD Study The Guatemalan STD Study, also known as the US Public Health Service STD Experiments in Guatemala, refers to a series of unethical medical experiments conducted by American researchers in Guatemala between 1946 and 1948. The study was aimed at investigating the transmission and treatment of sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, such as syphilis, gonorrhea, and chancroid. The research was led by Dr. John C. Cutler, a prominent American physician and scientist, and was funded by the US National Institutes of Health. The experiments involved deliberately infecting vulnerable Guatemalan populations, including prisoners, soldiers and mental health patients, with STDs without their informed consent or knowledge. The methods employed in the study were highly unethical and violated basic human rights and ethical principles. Participants were not provided with proper information about the nature of the experiments, their potential risks, or the available treatments. Many were subjected to painful procedures, such as direct inoculation of bacteria into their genitals or other sensitive areas without their consent. The study caused severe harm to the individuals involved, leading to infections, pain, and long-lasting health complications. Some participants did not receive adequate treatment even after the experiments ended. It is estimated that more than 1,300 people were affected by these experiments. The Guatemalan STD study remained undisclosed for decades until its exposure in 2010, when historian Susan Reverby discovered and brought it to public attention. The revelation sparked international outrage and led to an official apology from the US government to the Guatemalan government and its people. The Nazi Concentration Camp Experiments The Nazi Concentration Camp Experiments refer to a series of cruel and often lethal medical experiments conducted on prisoners held in Nazi concentration camps during World War II. These experiments were carried out by Nazi physicians and scientists under the guise of medical research and aimed to further the Nazi ideology of racial superiority and advance their military goals. The experiments covered a wide range of subjects, including the effects of various diseases, testing of new drugs and treatments, sterilization techniques, physiological and psychological responses to extreme conditions, and attempts to develop methods of biological warfare. Some of the most infamous experiments included human experimentation, prisoners were subjected to surgeries, injections, and other invasive procedures without anesthesia or proper sterilization. These experiments often resulted in severe injuries, infections and permanent disabilities. Infectious disease experiments. Prisoners were intentionally infected with diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis and typhus to study their progression and develop vaccines or treatments. Many died as a result of these infections or from the experimental treatments. Poison and chemical experiments. Prisoners were exposed to toxic substances including poisons such as cyanide to study the lethal effects and develop countermeasures. 
These experiments caused excruciating suffering and resulted in numerous deaths. Twins experiments. Twins, particularly children, were subjected to horrific experiments, aiming to understand hereditary factors and conduct racial and genetic comparisons. Many twins were killed or suffered lifelong physical and psychological trauma. These experiments were carried out without the informed consent of the prisoners, who were often subjected to extreme torture and suffered immensely. The experiments were a flagrant violation of medical ethics, human rights, and the principles established by the Nuremberg Code. After World War II, the Nuremberg Trials hurled the perpetrators accountable for their crimes, and the trials established the Nuremberg Code, which set guidelines for ethical human experimentation. The Trinity Test The Trinity Test was the codename for the first ever detonation of a nuclear weapon. It took place on July 16, 1945, as part of the Top Secret Manhattan Project, which aimed to develop atomic weapons during World War II. The test occurred at the Alamogordo bombing and gunnery range in New Mexico, United States. Led by J. Robert Oppenheimer and a team of scientists, the Trinity test involved the detonation of a plutonium implosion-type device nicknamed Gadget. The test marked a pivotal moment in history as it demonstrated the immense destructive power of atomic weapons and laid the foundation for the subsequent use of nuclear weapons in warfare. The gadget was an assembly of high explosives and plutonium-239, which was compressed to achieve a supercritical mass, initiating a self-sustaining chain reaction. The test was conducted in a remote desert area, with extensive safety measures in place to protect the surrounding environment and personnel involved. At precisely 5.29am, the gadget was detonated, resulting in an enormous explosion and the generation of a blinding flash of light. The blast produced a fireball that expanded rapidly, reaching temperatures comparable to the core of the sun and vaporizing the surrounding sand, leaving behind a glassy substance known as trinitite. The Trinity test released a tremendous amount of energy and yielded an explosion equivalent to approximately 20,000 tons of TNT. The blast created a mushroom cloud that rose to a height of over 7 miles or 11 kilometers and left the crater with a diameter of roughly 330 feet or 100 meters. The success of the Trinity test confirmed the feasibility of creating a functioning atomic bomb and provided the scientific and technical data necessary for the subsequent bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in August 1945. While the Trinity test marked a significant milestone in scientific and military history, it also raised ethical and moral questions regarding the use of such devastating weapons. The test served as a catalyst for the nuclear arms race during the Cold War and initiated a period of global anxiety about the destructive potential of nuclear weapons. Today, the Trinity test site is preserved as part of the White Sands Missile Range and serves as a reminder of the profound impact that the development and deployment of nuclear weapons have had on the world. Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment The Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment is a highly unethical and notorious study that took place in the United States from 1932 to 1972. It was conducted by the US Public Health Service in collaboration with the Tuskegee Institute, a historically black college in Alabama. The study's primary aim was to observe the natural progression of untreated syphilis in African-American men, even though an effective treatment, penicillin, became available during the course of the study. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. It is primarily transmitted through sexual contact, and if left untreated, syphilis can progress through different stages and cause a wide range of symptoms, including sores, rash, fever, fatigue, and damage to various organs. Syphilis can be treated with antibiotics, particularly penicillin, which is highly effective in curing the infection when administered in the early stages. Regular testing and practicing safe sex are important for preventing the spread of syphilis. The participants, who are predominantly poor and illiterate sharecroppers, were deceived by the researchers. They were told that they were receiving free medical care for bad blood, a term used locally to describe various ailments. In reality, the researchers deliberately withheld treatment for syphilis from the participants, even after penicillin became widely recognized as a cure for the disease. This decision was made to observe the long-term effects of untreated syphilis, effectively denying the participants access to proper medical care. The consequences of the Tuskegee syphilis experiment were severe, the men suffered from the ravages of syphilis, including painful symptoms and complications, and the disease was unknowingly passed on to their partners and children. 
Many participants died, and others experienced lifelong health issues as a result of the study's unethical practices. The study came to public attention in 1972, when a whistleblower leaked information to the press. This revelation led to widespread public outrage and prompted a series of investigations and hearings. As a result, the study was finally terminated and measures were taken to ensure the protection of human subjects in future research. The Tuskegee syphilis experiments played a pivotal role in shaping modern research ethics. It led to the establishment of ethical guidelines, such as the Belmont Report, which outlines the principles of respect for persons, beneficence, and the justice in human subject research. It also led to the implementation of regulations and safeguards to protect the rights and well-being of research participants. The Tuskegee syphilis experiments stands as a tragic example of the mistreatment and exploitation of vulnerable populations in the name of science. It serves as a reminder of the importance of upholding ethical standards in research and the need for rigorous oversight to prevent such abuses from happening again. Unit 731 was a clandestine biological and chemical warfare research unit of the Imperial Japanese Army during World War II. Operating from 1937 to 1945 in the Pingfang district of Harbin, in occupied Manchuria, China. Unit 731 was responsible for conducting gruesome and inhumane experiments on thousands of innocent civilians and prisoners of war. Under the leadership of Lieutenant General Shiro Ishii, Unit 731 focused on developing and weaponizing biological agents for use in warfare. The unit's activities including studying the effects of diseases, testing biological weapons, and conducting various forms of sadistic experimentation. Prisoners, primarily Chinese, Korean, and Mongolian civilians, as well as allied POWs, were subjected to unimaginable horrors. They were used as human guinea pigs to test the virulence and transmission of deadly diseases such as bubonic plague, anthrax, cholera, typhoid, and smallpox. The victims were often infected through injections, ingestion, or exposed to contaminated materials. Unit 731's experiments went far beyond infection and disease research. Vivisections, the surgical dissection of living subjects without anesthesia, were performed to observe the progression of diseases and injuries. Invasive surgeries were conducted without regard for the well-being or pain of the victims. Forced organ removal, freezing experiments and weapons testing on live subjects were also carried out. The prisoners of Unit 731 were subjected to extreme temperatures, both freezing and scorching, to study the effects of hypothermia and heat stroke. They were exposed to harmful chemicals, gases and poisons. Limbs were deliberately infected with gangrene to simulate battlefield injuries. Some victims were subjected to intense pressure chambers to test the effects of high altitude conditions. The majority of those subjected to Unit 731's experiments died as a result of the tests, either from the infections or injuries inflicted upon them, or through deliberate execution to prevent the disclosure of information. Many of the victims were disposed of in mass cremations to hide the evidence of the atrocities committed. After Japan's surrender in 1945, the atrocities committed by Unit 731 came to light, although the individuals involved largely escaped prosecution. In exchange for access to the research data, the United States granted immunity to the researchers through a secret agreement. The revelations about Unit 731 shocked the world and continue to serve as a haunting reminder of the depths of human cruelty and the disregard for ethical principles. The unit's actions violated fundamental human rights, including the right to life and dignity. The legacy of Unit 731 underscores the importance of upholding human rights, ethical standards, and international law in scientific research and welfare. Weaponization of the Plague During the late 1980s, there were reports and allegations that the Soviet Union's biological warfare research program had developed the capability to weaponize the plague and potentially deploy it as a biological weapon. It was suggested that the Soviet Union intended to load plague bacteria into missile warheads and use them against their enemies. However, it is important to note that specific details and the extent of the Soviet Union's success in weaponizing the plague remain limited and may still be subject to classified or undisclosed information. 
The weaponization of the plague would involve obtaining and culturing the bacteria, ensuring its stability and viability during storage and transportation, and developing a delivery mechanism that allows for effective dispersal. The use of missile warheads as a means of deploying biological agents was a matter of concern during the Cold War, due to the potential for large-scale destruction and casualties. While there have been reports and allegations of the Soviet Union's intention to use plague as a weapon, it is challenging to ascertain the precise extent to which they were successful, or if any operational deployment occurred. The dissolution of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s led to a period of increased transparency and cooperative efforts to address biological weapons concerns, including the implementation of disarmament agreements and verification mechanisms. It's worth noting that the use of biological weapons is prohibited under the Biological Weapons Convention, which came into force in 1975. The BWC aims to prevent the development, production and stockpiling of biological weapons and promotes peaceful uses of biological science and technology. The Soviet Union, along with other signatories, committed to abandoning offensive biological weapons programs and focused on defensive measures and scientific research for peaceful purposes. While the historical context suggests that there were attempts to weaponize the plague during the late 1980s, the exact details and outcomes of these efforts remain uncertain. The threat of biological weapons and the need for ongoing vigilance and international cooperation to prevent their use remains a significant concern in the realm of global security.